SwiftUI's environment lets us share data in a really beautiful way. Any of you can put data into the environment and any child you can get it back out of the environment and use it however they want to. Even better, if any one of those views tries to change the data, all the others will automatically update to reflect that new information. It's a really smart way to share information in bigger applications. Now in this project, we have a tab view with four tabs and the left three all want to share the same underlying data, the people in our project. Yes, they filter them differently. The first one has everyone, second one contacted, third one uncontacted, but the same bit is there underneath. This is a great example of where SwiftUI's environment makes sense. We can make a class that stores one prospect that has the information about one person, then make an array of those prospects and place that into the environment so all the views can see the same array of prospects. So we'll start in Xcode making a new SwiftUI uh, file here. I'll call this one prospect.swift. I'll change its foundation import to be SwiftUI. And then I'll say it as a class called prospect, which is identifiable and codable. Has an ID, UUID. Has a name, default into anonymous. An email address, default into an empty string. And is contacted Boolean, default into false. And yes, this thing is a class rather than a struct. That's intentional. It allows us to change an instance of this class anywhere in our project and have it updated in all our views instantly. Now remember, SwiftUI takes care of propagating data across our views automatically. So there's no risk of our views getting stale, showing old information. Now, when it comes to sharing a whole bunch of these across multiple views, one of the best things about SwiftUI's environment is it uses the same observable object protocol we've already seen with at state object. And this means we can mark properties that should be announced with changes using the at published property wrapper. And SwiftUI takes care of most of the work for us. It's really nice. So we'll add a second class here in the same file. We'll say at main actor class prospects is an observable object. Remember, observable objects just mark a main actor. Just do it across the board. It's a very good idea to have that. This will have an array of people, which would be an array of prospect. This should announce changes to the world. So we'll say at published that. Then I have an initializer for now that just does people is an empty array. Now we'll come back to this thing later on, not least to make the initializer do more than just make an empty array, but it's good enough for now. Now we want all of our prospects views to share the same data, to point to the same data. Now, if we were writing UI kit code here, I'd go into a long rant about how hard this is to get right and how you've got to make real carefully sure that you don't end up with wrong information or stale information in any one of your views. But in Swift UI, it only requires three steps. First things first, in content view, we've got to make an instance of our prospects class using at state object. So we'll say at state object var prospects is a prospect object. Second, we've got to inject this property into the SwiftUI environment so it's available to all our prospects views. Now these things here, the three prospects views plus the me view, they're all children of our tab view. They all belong inside our tab view. And so if we inject this object, uh, prospects with a C Hudson, uh, if we inject that object there into the environment for our tab view, it'll be available for all the views inside the tab view. So we'll say to our tab view, you have an environment object of our prospects like that. Now it's really important you also add the same environment object for the preview for prospects view down here for the uh, preview struct down here just to make sure your, your canvas carries on working correctly, just add environment object, a new prospect like that, just to keep it happy. And now we want all instances of our prospects view up here to read the object back out of the environment so we can work with it somehow. And this will use the at environment object property wrapper. Like this, we'll say at environment object, environment object, var prospects, is a prospect like that. And that will find the prospect class in the environment, 
attach it to our local prospect's property, watch it for changes, and automatically reinvoke the body property when it changes. All in just one line of code. Honestly, that really is all it takes. I genuinely can't think Swifty I could make it any easier. Remember though, when you say at environment object like this, you are explicitly saying there will be, there must be a prospect instance in the SwiftUI environment already by the time that line of code is hit. If there isn't, your app will just crash. So be very careful, make sure the environment objects are always there. Now, soon we're gonna add some code to add prospect using a QR code scan. But for now, we'll add a little test button to inject test data into the environment using a toolbar. So we'll say, uh, a navigation view here. We'll make it not say hello world, but instead show how many people are in our current prospects object. So that'd be prospects.people.count, just so we can see it working correctly. And then below the nav title, we'll say as a toolbar, with a button inside, and this will make a new prospect object, uh, prospect equals prospects, like that, there we go. Prospect.name is Paul Hudson. Uh, prospect dot email address is paul at hacking with swift dot com. Then prospects dot people dot append that prospect. As for the label for the button, we'll say it's a label with the word scan and system image QR code dot viewfinder like that. And now, boom, um, you should see this QR code scan button up here. Prospects, my mistake. Um, like that, which is cool. Try again, please. There we go. That works nicely. And if you press Command R, it should build and run the code. Please, build and run the code. Come on, let's go. You can do it. Don't give me crashy but crash face. Give me the code actually running, please. You can do it. I got faith in you. No, you're just going to crash again, again, again. Let's do a clean build. Helpful command there, folks. If you've got a product and choose clean build folder, often clears up a few uh, Xcode hiccups. Let's press Command R one last time before I cry Xcode. Go on, you can do it. Please, Command R. You're gonna run, thinking about it. Thinking about it. Okay, so it's absolutely fine, just Xcode being a bit strange. Um, anyway, so it's people zero, and then people zero, and then people zero, which is fine. Um, but if I go to any of these tabs and press the QR code button, it'll become people one, two, three, whatever, on the everyone tab. But then in contacted, it'll also be people three. And also in uncontacted, they're all pointing to the same data, which is exactly what we want. So it's always now people five in every one of these things. You'll see the same number increment no matter which of the buttons you tap. 